And that's an interesting thing that's new. Okay, now I'm going to share my screen. All right. Now I'm going to check my phone to see if we are live because I can't do it on the same device. Just a minute, folks. There it is. Yay, it's so excited. Okay. Hey, I see that one person is here already. Can you um, please write in the comment just something like I'm here so that I know who you are? And we're going to get started. I'm going to hit slideshow somewhere. I think now I see what the problem is here. You know, every week it is something. Just two seconds. All right. Slideshow from beginning. There we go. Yay. We got it going now. All right. Finally, welcome to using social media for donor acquisition. And what I would like to do is travel back in time to last month's meetup for a quick reminder. Remember our meetup last month was how to build and sustain an individual donor program. So let's look how, how that relates to social media. So you may recall we addressed how this same fundraising cycle applied to each type of donor we were talking about. It allowed us to acquire new donors, re-engage lapsed donors, and ret retain and upgrade current donors. This cycle doesn't change just because the platform changes, in other words. Um, now, the one thing I wanted to point out is research, that part of the, the cycle can actually apply to any part of the cycle, uh, even stewardship, which we have talked about when your board makes the thank you calls, if, they're, if you're missing some information and it feels uh, natural to ask additional questions to fill in that donor profile sheet that we had, uh, go ahead and use it for that too. But mainly we talk about research in terms of identification, cultivation, and solicitation. Let's remind ourselves what each one of these means. Identifying pr prospective donors, who they are, where they are, and how do you engage them. Cultivation is the art of building relationships. It, it involves getting out of that mindset of I've got to find more money and into the mindset of getting to know people, what they care about, and providing them with the opportunity to learn about your programs and how they can help to make a difference in the world you serve. And then solicitation, of course, is the ask. And, and although we tend to think of it in terms of how it relates to asking for funds, it can be anything relevant to your nonprofit, like asking people to advocate for you or to volunteer. Sorry about that, that was the cats. And then finally, um, oh, and solicitation, we did solicitation, and then stewardship is the thank you. In terms of donor acquisition, regardless of the platform, the question isn't, how do I get new donors? The right question will always be, how do I engage new people in our mission? Engagement means that they like and trust you. Once they do, they will become donors. But how do you engage new folks on social media? How do you get them to like and trust you? The other day I heard Julie Campbell uh, remind me of that Simon Sinek uh, TED Talk called How Great Leaders Inspire Action, which I have used a lot of times in presentation. And on the next screen, I've included a link to it and I do want to encourage you to watch this. Now, look how young he is. That was years and years and years ago. If you go to this link, uh, which you can come back into this video and copy and paste that. If you go to that link, you'll notice that there's been over 55 million people that have watched that. If you have not watched it, it is so worth it. I've watched it again and again. In fact, I even have a transcript of it. So you're a nonprofit leader that wants to inspire action of some kind, whether it is to donate money, advocate for you, preserve habitat and wildlife, march on a state capital, anything. Whatever it is you want people to do, you need to inspire that action. 
Simon came up with the golden circle to explain how to do this. His golden circle, as you see on the very left, outside is what, and then how, and then the very inside is the why. In other words, using his example, we usually communicate from the outside in. We tell people what we do or how we do it. And that often just falls flat. He talks about how our brains are divided into that same, those same three sections of what, how, and why. The why section of the brain, the limb, limbic brain is responsible for all our feelings like trust and loyalty. When we communicate from the outside in, from the how and what, it just doesn't drive behavior. One of his examples is the Wright brothers. Remember the guys with the airplane? Well, there was another guy, Samuel Pierpont Langley, at the exact same time, doing the exact same thing as the Wright brothers, but he had a lot more resources and a lot more recognition. The New York Times was following this guy around, yet it was the Wright brothers that literally got the plane off the ground. The difference was that the Wright brothers were driven by a cause, a purpose, a belief. As Simon says, People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Again, please watch this. We have evidence in our nonprofit world that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Remember last week we talked about, you're trying to get new people into your organization. So you put these sign up places on your website, right? You put the, you know, click here to get our uh, email newsletter or then this other one here, sign up. Um, and you know what we said? There's a low conversion rate. In other words, only half a percent of the people who come to your website actually use this. And why is that? Because you're not telling them the why. Why should they sign up? You're just not telling them. So your job is to give them the why. So let me give you my five-step strategy. You know me and my steps, right? <clears throat> my five-step strategy uh, for donor acquisition using social media is, first of all, you need to determine what time you have to use social media and who is going to be doing this. You need to identify your audience and research the platforms that your audience uses. You have to create content that will engage. You have to facilitate for engagement and you have to measure for success. Let's see, just do two seconds here. Sorry guys, I'm trying to, there we go. Okay, so here we go. Step one of the five step strategies. How much time do you have and who's gonna help you do it? It shouldn't just be one person. And when you get to the platform, you'll see what I mean about having to figure out, um, because you need to stay consistent, how much time that you wanna to devote to this, uh, depending on how many platforms you're doing. Um, remember last month at the meetup, Kara described how her board does this. There's, there's a few of her board members that are very good at social media. So she makes it easier on them by supplying them with some graphics that she designed herself from Canva. Um, and any other help that she can give them for ideas. And when we get to the social media calendar, I'll tell you what I mean. But try to get your board, volunteers, stakeholders, others involved in this. Uh, as long as they can be consistent. Step two is to identify your audience and then research the platforms. <clears throat> this is your, on the fundraising cycle, your prospect identification stage. So who is your media, who is your audience and where are you gonna find them? You, I'm sure you don't remember this, but back in January of 2020, we did a, a meetup on how to develop a communications plan. And we spoke about how you identify your audiences. We talked about what if you don't know much about your audience, what to do about that? How do you determine uh, what their interests are? Well, I don't have time to go back through an hour and a half of that. So instead, we had a workbook that I designed and it has quite a lot in it. So my email is up there on the top of the screen. Please use that and request the workbook from me and I'll give that to you so you can uh, do a better job at identifying your audience. <clears throat> uh, but one thing you definitely wanna do when you identify your audience, you do need to know age. This is how you're going to determine where your audience is. Now, to figure out the age of your folks that are part of your organization, your members, your donors, all of that, 
you may want to do a survey if you don't have that information already. Now, a lot of people may not be comfortable saying, I'm 60, I'm 70. They may not want to say that. So instead, remember when Brandy spoke to us about the, her donor loyalty study? This is from that study. The, here it is right here. So when you do your survey, you can just use a chart like this and ask, which generation do you fit into? They don't have to give you specifics that way. Um, and this, you can also ask them what is their favorite platform, because some people may not fit into exactly what the research says. Uh, like me, I'm old, and I, I use Facebook, and they say that seniors aren't using Facebook, but, you know, so that can be a second question. All right, so now you have to figure out um, where are they? Where is your audience? So you're going to research the platforms. Here's what you do. Give it a Goog. That's what the true crime obsessed people say. Give it a Goog. This is what I Googled. Social media platforms millennials use. So I went through that chart we just saw a second ago and used that same uh, Google search. And this is what I found is you'll get, I'm sorry, you'll get um, information for whoever you type in. I think it's from the Pew Institute that does this. Um, but millennials, look, they're mostly on Facebook and then Instagram. Anyway, you'll get that kind of information. You'll find out which platforms uh, that you want to use. Um, the other thing is you, do have, you should have a diversity of platforms, but you have to have a diversity in terms of your time constraints. Remember, the most important thing is not frequency of posts so much as consistency of posts. The thing about Facebook, you always got to remember, Technically, it only shows your post to 2% of your audience. The way to increase that percentage is by encouraging your people to comment, to put, push those little icons, you know, like, love, whatever. Do that, comment and share, and then Facebook will go, okay, we'll show it to a few more of your people. But again, remember, consistency is critical. All right, step three is create your content. You know, remember Mark, who was our live interview guest um, at the end of May, he was with the Central Texas Food Bank. So I went to their Facebook and I found this one. This is great. You need, when I say create content, here in our fundraising cycle, we are talking about cultivation, building the relationship. So this is how you do it. You're going to need graphics or video if you're on TikTok um, and copy, you know, your language. Now, listen, last Friday, I did post an article in my Friday Finds about how nonprofits can use TikTok. Make sure to, if your audience is using TikTok, not only read that article, it's not very long, easy to read, go into TikTok and, and type in some nonprofits and see what they're doing, all right? Um, so this is, in your creating content, this is how you're getting people to know you, like you, and trust you before you ever think about asking them for money. Remember, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. I'm gonna keep coming back to Simon on that one. All right, and remember too that each platform is different, like this kind of thing isn't gonna work on TikTok. So, you know, when you're researching your platforms for what platform your audience is using, also look and see what type of content and visual they're using. Now, because you have to be consistent, you're gonna need a social media calendar. This is the only way to keep yourself consistent. This is just an idea. So like say on Thursdays, you might want to um, highlight a volunteer, show a volunteer helping with a program with a little blurb from the volunteer of why they do it. What is their passion? Um, you could pick another day to highlight your programs in action Remember, you might have to get a photo release if you're using a client serve. If you're an animal shelter, cat and dog photos go over really, really well. Um, and you know what? It's already 11.15, so I'm going to speed through the rest of this. If you're trying to capture emails, um, let's see. Remember, we talked about lead generation. So you want to provide something of value to get them off of social media, media uh, and supply their emails if you don't already have it. So you use... Um, something of value that you can give them. And remember, we had this example from last month and you can go up and watch this. Um, so they click a link. So for instance, the link on your social media, 
you could start the story, like it said in that little calendar, start your story. And to get the rest of the story, click here, and then they have to put in their email. Or you have some kind of guide that you provide to them that's relevant to your mission. If they click they, to get what you're offering, then they have to provide the email. Step four is to facilitate engagement. In other words, you have to always keep your eye on what's going on in your, in your, on your page. Make sure you're answering all questions and commenting. So again, you need more than one person. Um, and these are some other ideas that you can use to keep up your engagement, which is your cultivation. And then step five is measure for success. And on Facebook, for instance, you go to insights and you can see what people are engaged in and to what extent. Uh, other platforms will have other ways that you can analyze your engagement. And then you have to adapt and adjust accordingly. Um, and then finally, solicitation. Back to our cycle, we've been talking about identification and cultiv cultivation, solicitation. Technically, you don't use social media for solicitation. In other words, you have somebody else do it. We know for a fact from experience, from all the research, that the donation buttons on your own site don't work on Facebook. <clears throat> they don't respond. The only time you use those effectively, there's two, way, two times. One is if your issue is in the news right now, or two, you have a campaign with urgency. Uh, donate here to help us raise this much money uh, to expand our shelter by so-and-so day, you know, because of, we have too many animals, something like that. So those are the only two reasons you can ask for money. Otherwise, you have everybody else do it your board members, your volunteers, get all their birthdays and then remind them each, every time you have your own calendar, okay, do your fundraiser because that's where the money comes from, all right? So you use social media to engage your audience, to build their trust in your organization and then invite them to something. Invite them to deepen their involvement. If you don't know the people who are liking your posts, you can click on their names and I message them and start a conversation that way. All right, I'd like to stay, true to my 15 minutes, which I've already surpassed by two minutes. Uh, please just come to our meetup on Thursday. We are very, very lucky to have Miss Marissa with us. She is a, a big wig in the world of community centric fundraising. So please come. All right, um, I'm going to leave you guys. Thank you for coming. And I don't know who was here because uh, nobody said anything, but I could see that people were watching. So thank you. Thank you for joining me. Hugs and kisses. Bye.